Hi everybody, I'm Joe Maglita. When it comes to developing applications for today's ultra-thin ultrabooks, thinner doesn't necessarily have to mean slower. We're talking today with Suresh Rangarajalu of Intel. Hi Suresh. Hi Joe. So Suresh, just to get a level set here to make sure that mm -hmm. everybody knows uh, what we're talking about and folks just getting into this, um, Intel offers a number of open CL tools, uh, which is a key part of, of um, the acceleration strategy. Can you give us a quick rundown as to what is in this family and what the tools do in brief? Right. So, you know, we introduced OpenCL for both CPU and GPU, starting with the third gen core processors. Previous years we did it only on the CPU, and you know, right, like in any development cycle, you have you know, write code, debug, and benchmark. So we provide tools for all these three things. You know, you have, we have tools to compile the code. We have a, it plugs in nicely with Visual Studio Editor. We have tools to debug and see where the problem is. You know, nobody writes perfect code in the first go, so you have to find out where the problems are and some tools would help. Then we have tools to profile and see where the problems are, performance bottlenecks are, and we have tools across all three. So as part of the SDK, we have tools for both uh, compiling and debugging. We have tools for, uh, we have something called Intel GPA, which is a tool to find out bottlenecks for in the graphics system. Mm -hmm. And it has been used by a lot of game companies to find mm -hmm. out how to optimize for Intel platform. Mm -hmm. And in, in addition to debugging for uh, games and 3D workloads, we added OpenCL support to the same tools. You know, there's system uh, platform analyzer and system analyzer. So those two things can identify where the bottlenecks are. This is also free, you can download it from intel.com. Last but not the least, there is something called Intel Vtune. This is something that people who have been writing code for CPU have been familiar with for ages. And this tells you where the bottlenecks are on the CPU side. And we extended that to show where the OpenCL bottlenecks are. So collectively, you, you are covered uh, throughout the whole cycle mm -hmm. between development, debugging, and profiling. And Vtune is the only one that you have to pay. Everything else is free for download on intel.com. Excellent. And just for, to get the second part of the equation clear in everybody's minds, well, uh, people might not be familiar, what are we talking about when we're talking about ultrabooks? Oh, people should be familiar with this. Because they should be, but just <laughs> for the one or two, so we're just getting If in. not, you will be because, uh, <laughs> you know, systems are getting thinner. You know, as, you know, systems were like the size of this room before, and then they got smaller, they were desktops, and then laptops came. The next uh, logical progression is thin and light laptops like this. Mm -hmm. And it's not just about thin and light, it's also being secure, responsive, and having it instant on, and being able to update uh, your email, Facebook status while the system is on sleep and hibernate and you know, wake up and do those things. Mm -hmm. So there's a collection of properties that make it an ultrabook, mm -hmm. uh, and that's the next generation of system. Mm -hmm. There are about 100 plus designs in the market today, so if you're not familiar, you'll be pretty familiar soon. <laughs> you will be uh, soon. Just walk to your local store, you'll find uh, lots of proof points. Good, I just want to make sure that everybody has the same foundation for this. One of the things that you talk about, Suresh, is that uh, th this idea that as platforms become smaller and smaller, mm -hmm. if you're a developer, it's more important to um, make use of all the processing power right. available to you. Mm -hmm. um, why is that? I think there's an obvious answer, but I think there's more to it than would seem obvious. So, first, first and foremost, if you have some processing power, you're basic, and you're not using it, you're basically leaving some user experience out, right? You know, you want something, if you click something, you want it to happen as fast as possible. Nobody likes waiting for the hard glass or whatnot and you know, waiting for something to finish. Mm -hmm. That's the first part. The second part of it is, you know, from a system uh, efficiency point, um, if you're running a workload and if it takes only some of the system resources, like 50% you know, of the CPU or something like that, and it takes twice the time to run it, it an you know, overall battery life of it would be lower as opposed to running it at 100% for half the time. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense from a power point of view to run it at, use all the system resources and maximize the uh, capabilities mm -hmm. uh, from a power point of view. Makes sense. So, you, so your basic premise here, again, in your evangelization work and in the well-attended session you had here at IDF is that using uh, open CL tools can help you, uh, as a programmer, maximize the 
power and potential power of these new generations of systems. Yes. So one of the, yeah, it is it is one of the tools. There are several other tools, mm -hmm. but what makes OpenCL interesting uh, this year is, you know, we last two years, or our last three years for that matter, our processor and graphics are on the same die, and that has a lot of benefits uh, from a system design point. Mm -hmm. And this year, you know, the graphics processing power has been increasing dramatically. In fact, from you know, if you look at it from 2006, our graphics performance improved about 40x mm. since 2006. And last two years, it's been, uh, you know, it went from 25x in 2011 to 40x last year. And next year, we announced that it's going to be even higher today. So, with all that graphics processing power, you know, you want to access that somehow, and OpenCL is one means to access that. Mm. And GPU and CPU are in the same system. Therefore, by using these two together, you are maximizing the capability. Uh, ma you are using maxim you're making use of the system resources efficiently. Hmm. Uh, so this all makes perfectly good theoretical sense. Is anybody actually doing this? Do you have some examples that you can show us? Some real life? There are quite a partners. few people who have made use of this capability, and it's not just uh, OpenCL. There are other capabilities in the graphics that. Uh, Uniquely, it's uniquely Intel like QuickSync video. You know, how do you accelerate mm. uh, video uh, encode? Mm. And uh, yeah, Sony is one example, which is why we have two systems mm. here to show that. And uh, the example I have here, uh, right in front of us, is Sony Vegas. Mm. Uh, the system on the left is last year's system. It's um, you know typical system that's kind of thick. Uh, you know, suddenly as systems get thinner and thinner, mm. the older one looks fatter. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, this, this used is to be thin, right? Yeah, this used to be <laughs> nice thin, but not anymore. Uh, when when you put one system like this next to each other, uh, this is Sony uh, system, Sony Wyo with Sony Vegas level, and this is Asus ZenBook with Sony Vegas 12. Mm. So last year's platform with last year's software, this year's platform with this year's uh, software. Mm. What I have here already preset is a workload. It's the same workload on both machines, and this year's because this is last year's uh, machine, it, we didn't have uh, GPU acceleration for this mm -hmm. particular program, and this one has it, and the Sony took advantage of it. Mm -hmm. We worked with Sony to make it happen, like we'd work with many other ISVs here. So what I'm going to do here is see if we can start the same workload in both the places at the same time, and uh, you, know, you could see it visually how long it takes. Uh, you might say I'm cheating here because I'm not pressing the same the button at the same time, but mm -hmm. close, I'm not too, close enough. Close enough, but I'm not worried about it because you know you can see the difference. So we'll give four or five or six seconds. So last yeah. year's pretty fast model used to be skinny model uh, against this year's super skinny model. So yeah. the new the new capabilities then is the integration uh, with with the graphic processing capabilities. Right. It, that's being announced at IDF this year. No, it, when we launched this platform this year, early this year, early we this announced year. it. Right. Anna, and right. we, have a we had a beta program where people could actually uh, write programs uh, using OpenCL for CPU. And when the system was available uh, at launch, people are ready with it. So every year, the way it works is you have a beta program. Mm -hmm. You can download the beta SDK. With that, you can optimize for yeah. the platform. And that would help you get ready for the platform. So once the, we launch our platform, you'll be ready with your software. Got uh, it. Uh, with your software. Got it. When we are ready. Now this seems like a natural uh, for gamers. Hmm? Uh, is, that, is that so? And are there other applications and use cases that are, um, you're finding that are attracted to this? Uh, this one, as a workload, there are certain workloads that lend itself well for GPU. Mm -hmm. um, there are certain workloads that don't. And it's kind of a, you have to know the domain and you have to understand which one works well or which one doesn't work. Mm -hmm. But going back to your point and you know, it's gaming people understand this, other people don't understand mm -hmm. this. There is some truth to it. Uh, you know, the way the current programming language is, is you know, to write a simple hello world program, you know, uh, for lack of a better term, is it'll take quite some understanding mm -hmm. and you have to go through a lot of hoops to understand it. One of the things that uh, we did working with other companies is launch something called CLU, 
uh, OpenCL CLU, this was done with Kronos mm. and uh, some of the members of the Kronos body. And we may gave it as an open source thing. For people from the graphics community will understand this, which is, you know, OpenGL had something called GLUT. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is something similar to that. And what it is, is it will allow you to experiment and play with OpenCL uh, in less than one hour. And you can do with, uh, mm. you know, the core of it. And this, you know, it's not something that you would use to ship up production worthy code, but it's like, you know, how to get your feet wet and try to understand uh, hmm. how to, you know, what it means and how to optimize, and, you know, play with it basically. Hmm. So if you're a college student, everybody would have gone, you know, gone through uh, using OpenGL GLUT mm -hmm. and this is something similar. Hmm. Now in, in the, uh, the classes that you, you give in the, in the technical training sessions that you're giving here at IDF and other places, tend to be at a pretty intermediate level. Mm -hmm. uh, what kinds of questions uh, and issues are people, the students, uh, the developers, bringing into those sessions? You mentioned uh, the quick, uh, the long t time to ramp, for example. Mm -hmm. I mean, is, is that one of the biggest concerns or, or roadblocks people have been running into? Uh, people coming to the intermediate class you know, probably already know that they want this and they know what it is. I see. Usually the concerns there are like, you know, I'm supposed to get some speed up. Why is it that I'm not getting it? Or, you know, how can I get speed up? Uh, what did I do wrong? What, everything looks right. And, uh, you know, many of the, there are, there are many things that you need to look for and optimize. Mm. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a lengthy question, but, you know, mm. we do have a webinar to kind of explain this. And uh, people can go and see it on intel.com. And uh, it, it explains what are the things that you need to look for to uh, kind of optimize and identify the bottleneck and optimize it. And uh, yeah, I guess I don't know if I've answered the question. No, you, have. Okay. you have. So, so uh, what is the name of the webinar? And, and people can. It's a three part webinar series on OpenCL. And if you Great. go and search for OpenCL on uh, Intel Great. Uh, on webinar, you should be able to find the link. Great. Uh, on the topic of resources, are there other uh, resources that you're using that you'd recommend to people uh, either dipping their toe into this or at an intermediate or even advanced level? Um, advanced is a difficult question, mm -hmm. which is each workload is different and you know, mm -hmm. it's very hard to each person's question will be totally different. So it gets more specific as we it, go up. Yeah, as you go from it's domain specific yes. or it's sometimes platform specific yeah. or it could be more like, hey, I wrote it for this, it works well here, why doesn't it work well there? Yeah. It's uh, very difficult to answer those kind of questions. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there is forum there so people can come and discuss that and mm -hmm. uh, there's a healthy debate uh, there. Mm -hmm. That's one thing. Uh, if you're at the beginner level, we have a lot of code samples that people can download and, uh, you know, play with. Mm. and uh, understand what's happening. Mm. Uh, so, so you've got a community built up around this. Does Intel provide direct support? I mean, there are pe people like you are out on the, in the road uh, mm -hmm. consulting with people, educating. So there are two parts that we do. One is, you know, some, for someone like Sony, mm -hmm. uh, who we have an ongoing relationship, you know, about a year ago, one year before or six months before, depending on the appropriate time. We tell them that these are the new features coming in the new platform. Here is how you need to do it. And, you know, we believe based on what we know about our architecture, you should be, you know, this much faster on this particular workloads. Mm. And, you know, these ISPs go work on it and some come back and say, I guess it's not as fast as we expect, but I got a little bit faster. Mm. What am I doing wrong or am I, is everything fine? So we go and look at it and say, okay, here, you know, here is what um, we need to do to go make it go faster. Or sometimes it's more like, okay, you know, we didn't understand your workload. So mm -hmm. it's, uh, we need to reevaluate our estimate, and sometimes we come back with a better knowledge of their workload. Mm -hmm. So we do. That's one level of support uh, that we offer to companies we work regularly. The other one is forums. You know, we offer. You know, when you post something in a forum, we respond. Um, more importantly, there are other people who respond also. Mm. So those are the two things that uh, we have. Mm. Um, so strong direct support, strong community support. Yeah, and uh, we try to archive all of the webinars. So mm -hmm. if there is something that we taught, even like the class today, uh, we'll try to uh, archive it so that people can, uh, you know, just because you're in a different part of the world doesn't mean that you cannot learn it. We'll try to Absolutely. store these so that people can access these. Absolutely. So what's going on in the background here? So 
Oh, in the background here? I think this might be done here. Uh, this one, one of them sounds a little quiet. One of them sounds a little quiet. Uh, so what we have here is that, you know, we had a video that was being rendered, and this one says it took about seven minutes, six minutes, 59 to be precise, and this one took about three minutes, 12 seconds. Hmm. And, you know, that's because Sony here was able to use the processing power of both CPU and the GPU together. Hmm. And... Uh, this kind of improvement is not uh, unusual. Hmm. And this one is a 35 watt system. This one is a 17 watt system. Hmm. So even though we went down in you know, power consumption by a factor of two, or by, you know, went from 35 to 17, essentially half. essentially half, your performance actually doubled. So just because you're going thinner and lighter doesn't necessarily mean that you're compromising in performance. You know, semiconductor industry and Intel in particular 35 years, we've been improving on performance every year, and this is something that uh, is continuing that tradition. Mm. Uh, just that it also requires some cooperation from ISVs and developers uh, to make it faster. So mm. it's not as easy as it used to be. Like you write a program every year, we do everything behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. uh, we continue to do that, but if you want to see drastic improvements like this, you need to do something different. Very impressive. Suresh, thank you very much for your time today. Appreciate it. Nice having you. Thank you.